Hi, I'm Scott from the Rio Grande Tech Team, and today we're going to be learning about navigating in the ZBrush user interface. So let's get started. Okay, so today we're going to be looking at the ZBrush interface and basic information about how to navigate within it and a little information about how ZBrush works. So the first thing that pops up when you boot up ZBrush is this window here has basic information about uh, what's going on in the ZBrush community. So things like updates, uh, the ZBrush Master Series, which are live streams uh, showing very prominent ZBrush artists, uh, things like that. Uh, so for now, we're actually going to close this window. And if you have a update that's available, uh, it will pop up in this window here. So I'm just going to click OK for now. Uh, and the first thing that pops up is this light box. So the light box is kind of a quick reference for different models. Now, a lot of these come in the base install of ZBrush, but you do have the option to create your own. You can actually create your own folder with things that you use quite a bit, uh, and this will allow you to save them into your light box to make sure you don't have to keep re-sculpting them over and over again. Uh, so you can save them in here, and when you're ready to bring them in, you can just double click on a folder and actually bring this into your, your scene. Uh, you can navigate by left clicking and dragging back and forth in here. Uh, and one that you will use from time to time, uh, up here at the top you have different tabs and one of them is Quick Save. So if you go into Quick Save, uh, ZBrush is actually saving while you're sculpting kind of in the background. So if you have a crash or and you haven't saved in a while, uh, chances are there will be a version, a relatively recent version uh, saved in here. So you're not going to lose too much. You can bring that most recent file back in and continue working on it. So the way you get rid of this light box is you can either come up here to uh, this button right here where it says light box or you can hit the comma key on your keyboard. So I'm going to click on that to collapse that. And the way ZBrush works is you start with what they call a tool which is a 3D mesh that you will start sculpting on. So that's why this menu right here is docked to the side of your screen because this is one of the first things that you'll do. So ZBrush has a uh, collection of uh, 3D prim primitives to start with. Uh, so you can click on this little window here to expand it and we have some 3D meshes that we can start with. There's also a quick pick uh, bar up here. This will populate automatically with things that you use quite a bit. Uh, but for now, I'm just going to, I'm going to click on the sphere. And I'm going to left click and drag in my scene to bring that out. Now, if you want to start sculpting uh, and you start left clicking or right clicking, it's just going to bring out more and more of those tools. So the reason for that is we didn't do one very crucial thing. So if you find yourself where whatever you click, it's just doing the same thing over and over again, uh, this is what's going on. So I need to get back to where I was, so I'm going to hold Control and, and tap Z. Uh, this is the undo command, and I'm just going back until I get my blank scene again. So I've still got my sphere selected up here. So I'm going to left click and drag, release, and then I'm going to go into edit mode. So edit mode is this button right here where it says edit object. You can see next to edit object there is the letter T. T is the hotkey to go into edit mode. Uh, ZBrush has a lot of built-in hotkeys, uh, and they do increase the speed of your, your workflow. So I, I highly recommend using them if you can. Uh, otherwise, you can uh, to go into edit mode, you can just click this button here. Uh, but I'm going to hit the T key. So you can see that highlighted, and now I can actually move my 
model around. So to move your models around inside ZBrush, the way you, you rotate is to right click and hold and then drag your mouse to rotate. To pan the screen, you hold Alt and then right click and hold. And then to zoom, you hold Alt, right click and hold, release Alt. Now I can move the piece in and out. So one more time to spin, right click and hold, to pan, Alt, right click and hold, and then to zoom, Alt, right click and hold, release Alt. And now I can zoom. Uh, there is a another way of doing this over here on the right here you have your your rotate zoom 3d and move and if you left click and drag on these you can do the exact same things that we were we were doing earlier without using the hotkeys uh, so that is a uh, that is an option as well and let's say let's say you pan and you accidentally move your model off of your screen and you're not exactly sure where it went uh, right in this area you can hit the frame button and that will bring your selected item back into your scene so as I'm moving this around you may notice that my little friend up here is actually uh, moving to show what direction I've got this this sphere so this becomes important because one of the features of ZBrush is that you can work uh, with symmetry. So I can be working on this area over here, and this area will be doing the exact same thing. So knowing what direction I'm in becomes very important to make sure that that symmetry is going to line up. So one thing I can do is, as I'm, I'm just right-clicking and holding, and as I'm doing that, I can hit the shift key. So I'm hitting shift and holding shift. And now I can snap to the different sides. And that applies if I'm going up or down as well. So that's a, a really nice way of snapping to a certain side of your model. Because with something like a sphere or something that you've already sculpted, it may not be immediately obvious what which side it's facing and I can actually click these little icons up here as well so these are representative of the different uh, axes so like the X Y and Z axis I can actually click on these to automatically snap to those axes so that's that's kind of a quick way and that way I don't have to sit here and hold shift and rotate to get it exactly where I want it. I can just go in, click that, and I'm done. So as you start adding models in, the list of tools that you create, they call them subtools, and those will be found here in this subtool menu just below your tool menu. So as I start adding more and more uh, bits of geometry, let's say I'm adding multiple primitives and I'm sculpting on all those, those will appear in a list right here. Now you can see that as I've expanded this subtool menu just by left clicking on it, uh, this menu is actually going below my screen. So if I mouse over to one of these sides here, you can see that I've got this up and down arrow and if I left click and drag then I can move this whole thing up and down to actually scroll. Some of these uh, some of these submenus get pretty large, so just remember that you can scroll with that. Now, as I'm adding multiple uh, primitives in and sculpting on them, I'm adding more geometry, and I can keep track of that up here at the top, uh, where it says active points and total points. So active points is the uh, number of polygons within the mesh that I currently have selected. So because I have this sphere selected, it, it's currently the only one in my list, it's saying that my uh, my points count here is 8,320. And total points will look at everything in the list and, and give you a total point count. 
Uh, this becomes important with 3D printing because uh, high density meshes are very labor intensive for a computer to load. So if you're going to be exporting this as a STL file for 3D printing, you do want to try to keep the polygon count as low as you possibly can. You'll probably be in somewhere in the a uh, couple hundred thousand to half million range. You really do want to keep it under a million uh, total points if possible. Uh, most of the casting companies that will 3D print and cast for you, uh, they, they prefer that you keep it under a million at least. I know Shapeways uh, has a limit on that. So just keep in mind as you're sculpting uh, and adding more geometry to these pieces, uh, try to keep the polygon count, and this is where you can, or try to keep the polygon count down, and this is where you can keep track of it. So um, as you are using the different menus and submenus within ZBrush, you'll find that you're using more than others. Uh, so I'll show you how to actually dock those. So let's say my, my Z plugin menu I'm using quite a bit. So this little icon up here on the top left, I can click on that and it will automatically dock it over to the left side of my screen. Now I can leave it there and I can double click on this little divider here and make it go away so I can have more room in here to to sculpt and then I can bring it back out whenever I, I need to and it's right there. I don't have to go uh, back up here or you know go hunting for a specific one that I use quite a bit. Then if you want to get rid of these you can always uh, click on the little icon here again to get rid of it and then double click on this little divider. Uh, you'll notice there's another one down here. Uh, this is uh, common for people that like to do uh, custom interfaces. So you can actually take individual commands. So like say these right here, you can actually uh, take these and have them down here so you don't have to go hunting through submenus uh, and create your own custom interface uh, for the things you're using quite a bit. Uh, we won't be getting into that, but uh, that's why this one's down here and why there's currently nothing down here. So you can just double click to close that. So the last thing that we're going to look at is the color of the mesh here. This is the default. This is uh, Madcap Red Wax. Uh, those materials can be found here, so you can click on this to expand this little window and choose the material that you feel most comfortable working in. Uh, the red wax is standard by default. Uh, I am typically working in the matcap gray uh, and there are a lot of jewelers uh, within the ZBrush community that are using kind of a bluish green color. Um, so you can you can take a look at some of these see what's what's comfortable to work in the the, the important part is that you can see what you're doing as you're sculpting. You just want to be able to have a good idea of what your model looks like, especially if you're going to be doing pretty high detail. Uh, so that's pretty much it for, for this lesson. Uh, we will be going into more detail on a number of different functions within ZBrush. But for now, have a nice day and feel free to call us anytime.